If you're an expat and you're looking to invest overseas, you have to take a slightly different approach than if you were investing in your home country. You have opportunities to be more strategic, the playing field is bigger, there's a lot more variables at play. Potentially there's more risk, but with risk comes reward if it's executed well. So if you do well, there is opportunity to make a much larger return than you could make in your home country or even investing in emerging markets ETFs in your home country. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the things that you need to consider when investing overseas as an expat. One of the biggest things that you're gonna to have to give consideration to when investing overseas as an expat is where are you a tax resident? That will usually be where you're living, where you are spending most of your time. It can also be your home country. So this is very important because this determines who is going to want to tax you and under what tax rates you're going to be taxed. The next part of that is once you do determine where your tax residency is, where you are a resident for tax purposes, you need to look at the tax system in that particular jurisdiction. Is it residency based? Is it territorial based? Most people looking to offshore and travel around as an expat investing overseas normally find it more beneficial to have your tax residency in a territorial based jurisdiction. The advantage of this is, and just generally speaking, all territorial tax systems have their own little quirks and things you have to be aware of. But the main advantage is in basic terms that a territorial tax country will generally not tax income that is sourced overseas. And that is a big opportunity when it comes to tax planning in being able to structure things and to minimize your overall tax bill. Another part of that is setting your investments up in a low tax jurisdiction is great, but what happens when you actually want to get access to your money and be able to live off that money when you remit that money, remit your income, your dividends, whatever it may be, back into the country where you are a tax resident, what are the tax implications there? For example, Thailand and Malaysia are both regarded as territorial tax systems, but they have slightly different rules in how you have to remit your income back into that country to avoid being taxed in that country. Next thing is what are the rules in your investments host country? So if you are living in Thailand, for an example, and you happen to have your investments in Singapore, then what are the rules in Singapore? How are they gonna tax your income in that country as a non-resident of that country? Do they tax dividends? Do they tax capital gains? Uh, do they have special rules for taxing rental income? Because in many countries, rental income will have different taxation to the rest of your income. So if you can find a country that doesn't tax you too heavily on the investment side of income where your investments are based, and then if you can get that money back into the country where you are a tax resident at a minimal taxation level, that is the goal. Now, if you are taxed in your investment host country, so where your investments are based, and then you uh, end up getting taxed in your residence country where you are living, will you get a tax credit for that tax that you paid in that offshore jurisdiction? The first goal is to avoid getting taxed at all when you remit the money back into your residence country, but if you are getting taxed, then you wanna try and make sure that there is a tax credit attached. Is there a tax treaty there to avoid double taxation across both of those different countries? And the last thing we'll talk about in regards to taxation is what are your plans in the future? If you are just traveling around at the moment, you haven't got an official offshore base, if your uh, tax residency is still based in your home country, then you might not see much benefit in setting up investments in overseas offshore jurisdictions. It might not make that much difference to you now if your home country is going to tax you regardless. But if there is a chance that you might go non-resident in your home country, if you might make a move overseas more official, set up a domicile in another country that will be recognized by your home country. So then you become a non-resident for tax purposes in your home country. They won't tax you anymore at the resident rates. Then it becomes beneficial to have your offshore assets earning and paying tax in a different country. This might not be something that you utilize right now, but potentially you might go full offshore, uh, go a non-resident in your home country, set up a base in another country five years down the track. So even if there is a possibility of doing that, it could pay to start putting things in place now, knowing that when you are ready to potentially become a non-resident for tax purposes in your home country, then you already have these things in place. You have the investment package over here in another country and you have a rental over here in a different country and it's all working well taxation wise and you know you can get the income out of these countries into the country where you're living now and not have your home country try and tax you for it. The next thing I'll talk about here is what I'll call the expat advantage or the expat edge. 
you might not think much of it, but when you give it some consideration, you'll realize that you have a massive advantage over regular folk, especially regular folk who are living back home in your home country. You're on the ground every day, you're walking around in these different countries, you're seeing things, you're seeing how the economies operate, you're talking to different people, you're getting a feel for how things flow in these countries, and with that comes opportunity. You might see that a particular country or region is gearing up for a big upward trend compared to perhaps a downward trend in your home country. So then the next thing comes, are you going to use this unique perspective and insight that you have into these foreign markets? Are you gonna use that to your advantage and put some money on the table and capitalize on that? There certainly is opportunity there to have a really good strategic think about it and put some money to use. The fact of the matter is you can read all of the online news articles, you can watch all the YouTube videos in the world, but there is no substitute for doing boots on the ground research in a particular country. If you are there yourself, getting a feel for things, talking to people, you're there, you're living, you're seeing stuff with your own eyes. That is the best research anyone can do. You're doing it every day without even knowing it. Of course, you can be more proactive about it, but just have a think about the feeling you're getting on the ground, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, and use that to your advantage because the regular joke back in your home country doesn't have this kind of intel that you're getting every day. Now, if you're an expat, you're living overseas, what are the things that people generally invest in? The common things include shares, and that is setting up a brokerage stock account. So you might set up a brokerage account in a country like Singapore, which would enable you to get access to uh, the Singapore Stock Exchange as well as other parts of Asia. Now, we have some contacts in the region that can help you set up a brokerage account in Singapore. So head over to our website if you're interested in doing that. Another popular asset choice, of course, is property. So whether you want to buy a condo for yourself and just uh, gain some lifestyle benefits out of it by having that condo, your home, your base in the region always there for when you want it, uh, but also getting capital appreciation potentially if you believe the region is gonna grow, if the property market in that particular country is going to grow you might get a better return on a condo than if you had money sitting in a bank account somewhere. So buying a condo for yourself, that's one thing. Buying a condo or another property to rent out is another thing. A lot of the big cities in Asia, places like Bangkok, uh, KL, they have pretty strong markets for people who buy condos and rent them out on Airbnb to foreigners. You could even have a condo that you rent out part-time and then you live in it part-time. That's an option as well if you've got someone to manage it there for you when you're not around. Another property play that is quite popular is people in Bali who like to build villas and rent them out to foreigners, to digital nomads. There's quite a reasonable market for that as well. Or you can buy an older style, more modest accommodation, an older condo in somewhere like Thailand and rent out to the local population. That's an option as well. It might not be as high a returns as you might get on Airbnb, but it could well be more reliable returns if that's what you're looking for. And the good thing about that as well, it enables you to earn some local currency. You might want to hedge and set up some other bank accounts in KL, earn some ringgits, hold some ringgits, uh, set up a bank account in Thailand, earn some barts, hold some barts, hedge any currency risk, any fluctuations in the foreign exchange market. But then you can also use this money to buy other investments down the track. You can use this money to fund your living expenses when you're in these countries as well. The last type of asset that I'll get into in this video is uh, getting into business in a foreign country. This will give you direct exposure to the local economy and that might be uh, selling things to locals or might be selling things to foreigners as part of the tourism industry. So you could set up a business in a place like Thailand or Malaysia and this could help you get a residence permit into the country as well. You could have a partner on the ground to help you run things or it could be a foreign owned entity. You can start something from scratch or you might even opt to buy an already established business from someone who's already living there. This is probably the more complex, more involved route to take, setting up a business in a foreign country, but it's definitely able to be navigated. It's nothing to be concerned about, but the beauty of it is it gives you the best access, the most direct, pure access to that particular economy in that particular country. Okay, so now we'll cover a couple of other factors and then we'll close things out so you can get on with the rest of your day. Another thing that you have to give consideration to when investing overseas as an expat, you know, there's all the things that we've spoken about already, but even if you have a really good setup for taxation and a really nice investment in a, in a particular country making you a really good return, all this isn't really much good to you if you can't get that money back out to where you need it. If you can't remit that money back into the country where you're living in with the bank account you're using, it's not much use to you. I'm not talking here about if you're going to be taxed when remitting money back into your residence country. I'm talking about banking infrastructure. 
So if you can't physically get that money out from the country where you're invested in to the country where you're living and where you have access to a bank card in that country, that's gonna be a problem for you. Offshore banking is getting more and more regulated all of the time. There's constant pressure from organizations like the OECD to make things a lot harder moving money around offshore. You might be making a bank transfer that is perfectly legal, but then you find out that the bank you're trying to transfer to puts a hold on it. They freeze it for you for a period of time. This is happening. And this can be disastrous to your business if you had a big transaction coming up, if you're trying to make a big purchase and you needed that money, and then potentially the money got frozen when you're trying to transfer it, and then the uh, the big purchase you're going to make fell over and you lost a deposit. You gotta be really wary of this stuff and it is happening, so you have to give proper consideration to it. So are you going to be able to transfer money from one bank account in one country to another bank account in another country and not have those funds frozen? That's one thing. Are you going to be able to transfer money from one country to another country and not get absolutely ripped off on bank fees? Particularly on the bank where you're bringing money into, the receiving bank, you need to be able to satisfy them that you're not a terrorist and you're not a money launderer. As ridiculous as that sounds, it is the anti-terrorism and anti-money laundering legislation that is getting pushed around the world in many jurisdictions that can make it difficult to move money around quickly. So when you're dealing with things, business transactions, business deals overseas, just make sure that you give adequate time to get your money from one place to another so you can get that money, close out the deal. Because if it does get flagged and frozen for a temporary period, you've got to make sure that if you're buying a business or buying a condo, that the settlement date is far enough out in the future so that when your money did get released, you can still make that purchase and not lose your deposit. I'm not saying this happens all the time, and usually if you have all the right documentation in place, there should be no issue, especially if you have a lawyer in the country where you're making a purchase working with you on it, but it's just something you have to be aware of. Make sure you don't try and rush these things too much, because transferring money from one country to another isn't as straightforward as transferring money within one country. All right, so just closing things out now, guys. So being able to invest offshore as an expat gives you a huge advantage. It allows you to be more strategic. It allows you to invest in certain things that other people don't have access to. So you might use this to improve your tax situation. You might use this to just get a better return on a particular investment or particular investment trend by targeting a certain region and industry or whatever it may be. We're always looking around. We're always talking for people and looking for opportunities. So if you want some help, to come out here and get your money working, talk to us, you can have a consultation with us, we can help you to do it. If you're looking for someone to assist with your boots on the ground research, the research that can only be done from getting here and having a look around. If you're not able to do that, if you want someone to assist with that side of things for you and facilitating things with the lawyers, with the real estate agents, with the stockbrokers, all of the people that you need to talk to, we can help you to do all of that stuff. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you're interested in setting up a brokerage account in Singapore, getting access to the Singapore Stock Exchange, not only that, but also other markets, Thailand, Philippines, Japan, Hong Kong, we can help you to get your brokerage account set up. That is one of the main services that we're rolling out in the near future. So talk to us if you're interested in that one. Now that's it for the video, guys. We'll catch you later.